Hi, this is Anita, the Global Trade Gal, and also with the blog Mindoro. Today, I want to talk a little bit about AI or artificial intelligence and basically why I feel like artificial intelligence or AI is going to be the way for the future for the supply chain. AI is all about machine learning. And it's also, you know, those of you that know the term, it's about artificial intelligence. It's basically about the more the machine works, the more the machine's going to be able to learn. This is in very, very simple terms. And that very soon the machine will become so well, it's going to be able to make the decisions for you. And it's going to be able to make the decisions with a huge amount of accuracy. And it's going to be able to basically help you be able to save money. And it will it, it'll mean that there'll be people that are presently now in the supply chain whose jobs could become obsolete because their jobs essentially will be replaced by artificial intelligence. Whether we like it or not, AI is the future. I kind of equate it to the fact that AI is kind of like that really high-speed train that's coming at you. And no matter what you want to do, you can put your arm out and you're not going to be able to stop it. It's just going to roll over you. And that's kind of a bit of what AI is in the global supply chain. It's going to be the way of the company. AI is going to be the way of the future. It's because it's expected that it's going to decrease the workforce in the supply chain. In other words, it will start to replace present day supply chain workers. And many companies are going to find this as something that they want to do, or maybe it might be out of necessity. They might find that they can't get the workers that they need. They can't find the qualified workers that you know, people maybe don't want to work in the same jobs as they once did. So they may find that they're going to have to switch to AI in order to survive. It's the same thing what's happening a lot with robotics, where there's many factories that are switching to robotics for many of the same reasons. In 2019, McKinsey and Company, they did a survey where they started to survey people about AI and, you know, they, they were asking these companies about whether they saw an increase in revenue. Um, you know, were they going to adopt AI? Did they think it was going to be a good thing or not a good thing? And if you actually um, uh, look at my blog, which I'll put a link to on it, you can find a resource there, which will link you to their full report that they have. But McKinsey and company, they basically said this about the manufacturing and the supply chain. Now, now notice that this talking now mainly about manufacturing and supply chain with this. They said the two functions or the two areas in which the largest share of respondents reported cost decreases in the individual AI use cases are manufacturing and supply chain management. So basically in manufacturing supply chain was the two areas where companies were saying like, yes, this has decreased my cost. IA has helped me. They went on and said, in manufacturing, responses suggested some of the most significant savings come from optimizing yield, energy, and throughout. In supply chain management, respondents are most likely to report savings from spend analytics and logistic network optimization. So in other words, in the manufacturing, they're saying that they were able to basically save costs, that they you know, didn't waste as many um, they didn't waste as many of their products, didn't waste as many things, that they were basically able to optimize their yield and their energy throughout the entire supply chain, which means in sense that their costs were lower and they were able to make more money. In the supply chain, it was that really they were able to analyzation of the data and the logistics network helped them to be able to make better decisions. So in McKinsey's and company's report, the two areas where they're saying that people now are looking at AI is a supply chain. And that's why I say, for, in particularly in the global supply chain and manufacturing, this is why AI is like that fast train coming at us that is going to change the way we do things in the near future. You know, AI is going to replace the workforce. And that means that some of the workers are going to have to be retrained. And that they're going to have to be retrained to be able to work in the present day supply chain. And the reason is, is because the AI continues to give these significant returns to many companies. And so at the end of the day, when a company sees that the AI is giving them significant returns, and of course, they want to keep doing it. For them, it's the way of the future. 
You know, as, as many um, in the world start to grab, grapple with decreases in population, you look at, you know, China has a problem with decreases in population. You know, Japan, of course, has had this for a while. Uh, there's sort of like this shrinking workforce. Um, many companies are going to be forced to adopt the AI technology to replace their workers. As I see it, you know, AI is kind of like that, you know, it's kind of like that thing that's going to just keep coming and coming and coming. So we have a choice here now, those of us that are in the supply chain, we can either begin to try to learn more about AI, learn how it can help us, learn about what it all entails, or we can ignore it. Those really are our two choices that we have now with AI and with the supply chain and what is going on now. Years ago, I heard something, and I apologize if I don't necessarily have the um, exact statistics here with me, but I heard this from somebody who worked in the shipping industry in Hong Kong, and this was quite a few years ago, and they were talking about how in Hong Kong, at the port there, they could scan a container, put a container in. It was like, it was like within like a minute. It was very, very, very quick. And if anyone's been to Hong Kong or Singapore, you've seen these major Asian ports, you can just, or China ports, you can just see like, there's, you know, just tons and tons and tons of containers and how, and how fast they are and how, how quickly they move these containers. But then they said that in, in Los Angeles in the United States, a lot of the workers there, the shore men, didn't want to bring in this technology. And so, you know, we're, we're in Hong Kong, let's say, for example, you know, don't take these exact numbers, but I'm just pulling numbers out of my head here. Like, you know, maybe there's one minute in, in Hong Kong and maybe it takes eight minutes in L.A. And, you know, that becomes a huge difference now, where especially we're seeing like this bottleneck and everything that's going on. You know, the truth is that there's only so long that we can hold off technology. You know, there's only so long that, you know, the world can say like, look, we don't want to lose the workers. We want to keep the workers. We want, you know, we want to still be digging coal. We want to be doing all this. There's only so long that we can hold this off. Technology is going to come. And, you know, what it's going to be forced by either outside forces or different ways. It's going to have to come. You know, things like self-driving cars, you know, uh, battery operated vehicles, all of these things, whether we like it or not, are probably in our future. And it's something that we won't be able to stop because eventually it's going to just keep coming at us. So AI for me, like McKinsey and company said, is going to be the way of the future. It's going to be something that we're not going to be able to stop. So each of us are in the supply chain or anyone who's interested in global supply chain needs to think about what can we do? And I think a few things we can do, number one, is learn about AI technology, really you know, understand it more, and then see how it can be able to help us within our own global supply chain. This is Anita, the Global Trade Gal, and we hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Please do subscribe to our channel. If you have any comments or questions, we would love to hear from you. If you have any need for home decor products in Vietnam or China, we would also love to talk to you. Thank you so much for listening. We really do appreciate your time.